Ready? Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. This is episode 35-10, the end of season 35. And we're your hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernu. And every week we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. I think I dropped something. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> You're all over the place nowadays. <laughs> My chair's like slowly moving backwards. We listen to great video game music and we hang out and we chat about it. And sometimes we chat about other people in the podcast world. That is correct because one thing I've, I've come to appreciate after Rob got me into this many, many years ago is the fact that despite the existence of a number of other communities, gaming, music, video, what have you, communities, there's something about the VGM community. Though I have had a person that um, that claimed differently here, and I'm not disputing that, but yeah. I, I haven't experienced it myself. This seems to be one of the more wholesome of the social communities. Like oh, okay. I, don't, I don't come across a lot of toxicity at least in our bubble and the small bubbles we engage with within it. That's right. And I love it I for I feel that. that way too. Yeah. I mean, I always felt like there's a lot of like fun camaraderie in the fighting game uh, community, um, the FGC as they call it, but it is hyper masculine. It's all like, and it's really hard to break into a tight community of men who are very aggressive with each other. Right. Not to say there aren't a lot of female players and a lot of women who love to play fighting games and who are at, in top professional you know, places in mm-hmm. the leagues. It's very hard to be there, and it's it's not super welcoming all the time. Nope. Um, but yeah, music is music. I hope you enjoy it. If, whoever you are, wherever you're listening from, I hope you enjoy some great music that we're going to listen to today. And if you are into it, make an effort. Here's that early do and remember, I guess. Make an effort to not be a jerk about it to other people. Everyone is welcome in this space to enjoy game music and hang out, make new friends, new camaraderies. Mm-hmm. Just engage with oh, that heck. and support people. We're on. not making music here. We're just going to comment on it. <laughs> We're going to listen to it and enjoy. And enjoy. Um, all right. So before we get started, uh, one thing I want to mention is you may have noticed there's an ad at the top of the show. Yes, we are um, for at least a short time putting ads on the podcast to see how it goes. If you would like an ad free version of the podcast, you can go to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. And as a member at any any level there, you get access to the entire podcast library free of ads ad free since 93 and a bunch of other fun stuff too so um but yeah so uh top of the morning to you for now top of the morning indeed <laughs> and speaking of top of the morning to me i'm not a fan of all at all at all of this <coughs> this new rob completed games yes. during the month where it's actually being noticed and tracked <laughs> It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, every <laughs> February, we challenge ourselves, the four in February, can you complete four games? Just complete them. And you always said, doesn't matter how far in you already are, how old the game is, how mm-hmm. short the game is, you just got to complete them. Just got to complete and them. It's kind not- of a, it's like, get through your backlog. And every year, I'm like, Pernell, you just talk for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been playing anything but like the same like two games, and they're never going to be, they're never going to end. You know, I'm just going to play DDR and Street Fighter or whatever, and that's it. Tetris, you but know, then, but then things have changed. Things have changed. Um, I have a lot of time. <laughs> things have changed. I hold a baby on the couch and I play a lot of games. <laughs> <laughs> He's knocking them out. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, but you've been playing some stuff, right? I have been. Well, I have been. So I played through the entirety of the Goonies two uh, a weekend or two ago with a friend, mm-hmm. and that was a engaging experience. One that I'm glad I was able to experience again because I was kind of jonesing to see if that game still carried on this weight. And if I can remember stuff having not called Nintendo Power again. <laughs> Despite not remembering, I mean, was it still entertaining? Oh, it was very entertaining. And I did remember the thing that I called Nintendo Power for, but I got stuck on one other stupid part where um, I couldn't find the sixth Goonie. And it was because I didn't have the proper orientation of the character when I entered the room. Uh, the sixth six Goonies in here. In uh, my I'm heart. Pointing, pointing to my heart. Yeah. <laughs> in the heart the whole <laughs> time. Sixth isn't here the whole time. So, like, ultimately, Francis had to give it away for him. He was like, go back to the room you just left. I was it, like, he's in there. He's it, like, well, it's because you're yeah. facing the wrong way. Prim. It makes me so happy to hear you're playing classic games, though. Oh, yeah, I'm getting into these again. Because, yeah. like, after that, I played, I started playing Gargoyle's Quest 2, and I'm going to finish it. Um, but Gargoyle's I'm, Quest 2 was on the Game Boy? No, that's the one I was on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, the NES. Uh-huh. So, I'm going to finish that maybe even sometime this week. 
Um, so I'm, I want to just knock that one out. Oh, the first Gargoyles Quest was on the Game Boy. Yes, oh, which okay. I did also play through again and finish last week. I always thought that was cool. And just cool. It was really cool as a kid to be like, oh, like all like all the, the the future, the newest stuff always went to the Game Boy. It was always like ports or like remakes or sequels. So it was always cool to have like a game starting on the Game Boy and then getting a sequel on the TV. <laughs> but then here's where the weirdness comes yeah. in. So. Towards the end, I was like, okay, this week's getting weird. I got a friend coming to visit. I might not have that much gaming time leading up to the end of the month. What am I going to do? Mm. And then I kind of lucked out, give or take here, because a friend of mine gave me a game that he was hoping I could talk about. And I was like, I'm only going to talk about if I like the game. So if it sucks, it sucks. But the benefit of that game also is that it's very short. <laughs> so I pulled it up at work two days ago uh-huh. or a couple days ago and played through it in two sessions. Um, it's one of those retro inspired games that are like there's like an escape room done with an NES style called Nescape. Think Netscape Navigator without the T. <laughs> Nescape. <laughs> but not like the Netscape Navigator interface. Not the interface. Yeah. Just the word Netscape uh, without remember, a T. Remember frames per now? No. Uh, remember web frames? I actually I sort of kind of do. I, I had a weird dialogue about that the other day about Mo- they call it models now when they pop up in front of the image, but it's oh. not like an overlay of sorts. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this game is like for people, I guess, that like games like Shadowgate and Deja Vu, mm-hmm. because the idea was the guy who made it was like, I want to make an escape room, but I want it to be on an NES cart. Yeah. So the game is one room, four different walls, and each of those walls has a bunch of stuff on it. Like you know, like tables and like typewriters, oh, and like clues objects. and puzzles, and that's the funny thing. The clues are weird though, because you know, if you go to like a, a typical escape room, you have a bunch of books. They might start you off on something like you might have a theme, like you're in a uh, George Washington's yeah. tent. And you're around like, okay, what's on the wall? Is there a poster? Let's look at the poster. Oh, where's the books? Look through the books. You know, yeah, yeah. You get to start somewhere. With this game though, you start in a dark room, and the guy just says, "Where am I? How did I get here?" And then you have to find the light switch to turn the light on. And then when you turn the light on, you just have these, like, again, like, shadow gate. I still only want to say shadow gate, because I might be getting the game type wrong, but, like, these NES, like, sprite-style, like, room layouts. Like, mm-hmm. one wall might have a piano and, like, a phone booth and a grandfather clock. Another wall might have, like, a ball-tilting station and a, tr- a chest and a few things like that. And you get one button that can be uh, used to interact with things. Right. And then one button when needed sometimes to back out of a situation. And you get one hour to solve the room. Oh, that's cool. So it was weird at first because I was like, what the heck am I even doing? Because there's no, you can hit the two triggers to get like a quick explanation, like here are the controls or whatever. But for the most part, the game gives you nothing. There's no narrative. There's no like cohesion as to why I'm in this room. What is this about? Is there a story here? It's just literally, here's a puzzle. So without giving anything away, how did you do? I. Are you still there? No, I, I got out, which is why it's on the 4th of February. Oh, I see, I see. But it did take me two tries because the first time I got to the point where I was like 20 minutes or 15 minutes away from solving it, and it just was like, okay, I don't I don't feel comfortable having enough time here. So I was kind of in sleep mode for the Switch. Oh. I ended up going to a friend's house, and I was like, I'll just do it over. So right, I just right. like, give yourself more time. Give myself more time because when you come back, you just do it all over again. There's like slight variations, but it's the same general puzzle, okay. which, by the way, one of those puzzles can kiss my butt. <laughs> it is a friggin' sliding tile puzzle. Oh, yeah. They, those are stupid. Okay. I'm nah, just going to nah, put. Nah, 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 you know what I'm talking nah, about? Nah, nah. You know what I'm talking about when I say slide block puzzles? The ones where it's like those, like, like an oh, image. We, we all know. Yeah. They're we, so. Yeah, yeah. It's like an, yeah, yeah. We all had those little games as kids. Uh, plastic you get at the dentist office for being a good little boy. Yeah. And they were fun when you weren't being timed. <laughs> when you're being timed, though, it's just like, I better find a logic to this. And then when you if you fail the room and you know you got to do it again eventually. Yeah, that sounds like hell to me. <laughs> but uh, I did get through it both times. I took had to take it on, and then the other puzzle that was kind of just weird is there's like a eventually you find a marble, which you remember those remember that game Labyrinth? Yeah, you said there was like a little. You said earlier you said there was like a little like a uh, like marble maze type thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you tilt the 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 stage. So that it can kind of go through a maze. Yeah, so you use like the cross pad to do the tilting. Yeah. But the thing that's annoying about it is I guess the creator was trying to come up with a good way to emulate the fact that the table is shaking. Yeah. So every time you move the table to move the marble, it has this like abrupt like shake oh, animation. It's like, ugh. If I had motion sickness, it would be coming up oh, right now. That's funny. A super monkey ball is kind of like based off of that loosely. Yes. Yeah, so you change, you tilt the whole world around, not that you don't tilt the monkey. You don't tilt the monkey. Don't tilt the monkey. <laughs> There's a put, trip. Put, put that on a t-shirt. 
So the weird thing about it was in the end, I was like, okay, well, I got the game for free. I find myself enjoying it, essentially. But at first, I was about to say, well, I don't know if I'd recommend this to anybody because I'm not paying for this. I'm not, not, not paying a ton for this game. But then I went and looked it up to confirm before I went with the big hammer fall. It's a $5 game, which ultimately implies that if you just want a quick hit of, like, nostalgia and solving an escape room puzzle, $5 is fine. I mean, you pay 20 bucks for a real art, um, room experience. If you bought something like Zero Escape... I mean, yeah, you can get that for like ten bucks, but it retailed originally for like thirty. Yeah. So I mean, it's I mean, a, it's good value, is what you're saying. Yeah, I think it's yeah. good value just to get the one experience out of it. It might take you two tries to knock it out, and then you're like, oh, I was good, I'm done. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but my, my game playing has slowed down a little bit because I discovered Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. There's a new series. It's a new Star Trek. Oh, it's good. It's based off of the the the, the series Discovery. It's kind of a spin off of that. And it's the captain right before Captain Kirk takes over the Enterprise from the original series, mm -hmm. and it's amazing. It's 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 a it's more it's the most like the Next Generation than it has ever been. It's so it's so wonderful to watch. It's I, pleasant to watch. I'm genuinely amazed that Star Trek, despite all these years having gone by, they're still getting so much mileage out of that property. It's, the world is so massive. It's so huge. It's not like Star Wars where there's like there's the Jedi. There you go. There's the Empire. Like, this is like, no, there's an entire universe of things happening. You but know? that's the thing that messes they, with me, they though. Do don't anything. they, but despite that, don't they still kind of, kind of hop on the same, like, races more often than out of species? Like, what was like the, the Klingons? The Klingons and the Vulcans. And the yeah, Vulcans. yeah, yeah. They're like, all out there. But, like, you know, there's different generations of, of like, of them knowing each other and, and of technology. And but so. I was to say, it's like, it's Star Trek, as no one can see. I'm sweeping my arm across the span here. Like, it's, Infinite worlds, well, that infinite was, planets. That was Voyager. Voyager was what if we take a starship and just and just they accidentally get thrown so far away that for them to get back home would take an entire lifetime or so, five seasons. And so what they did was like they realized, yeah, or no, it was seven seasons. Seven seasons. I was close. <laughs> they figured it out on the way home, but they were like, okay. So at the end of like the the pilot episode, they were like, we're never going to make it home in our lifetime. Why don't we just enjoy the ride? You know, put it like in a neutral speed, and we'll just point our direction home. And just meet people along the way. That sounds. I, I was I, Voyager is probably my favorite series. Bohemian of, of Star Trek. Bohemian Star Trek. Let's just cruise. They're guys. just cruising around. They're like yeah, they were just cruising kind of into through it. Space. And, and Janeway was my favorite captain anyway, so I, I liked her a lot. Um, and I cut you off, didn't I? No, we're no. this is this is how conversation flows. I'll, I'll I'll talk more about my my four in February. I might not have a full four. I might only have the three. Um, I don't know if I'm going to finish what I've got on deck because got a whole week. You the never last, know. I know it's true. The last campfire is a lot longer than I expected. I don't think it needs to be as long as it is. It's so that's a problem. Um, season, I'm not so sure about, but yeah, there's a few. I mean, I can always just jump on something else, but you know me. And it's something sad about. I have my phone out. Too, I'm right? playing Vampire Survivors. I saw the <laughs> la I finished the last boss, but I'm trying to 100 percent it now. Getting all the item combos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I think I think I've got all. The, I think I got all the item combos. I think I've only got four more items to discover, and I think there's like, like maybe ten more unlocks left in the game. There's something kind of sad about the that too, in the sense like the idea that you want to do this for in February, you want to engage your games, and I got really intense with like certain games. Like everybody started playing Hollow Knight, and I was like, yes, we could all play Hollow Knight together, and I have been enjoying that yeah. dialogue. Game fans playing uh, Breath of sorry Fire Emblem uh, Birthright, a oh, Birthright, and I'm like all right, I can start playing that again too. And I'm trying to juggle that too. And then life is so busy and everything's happening. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't, do it's like, you, you it gotta, sucks you gotta, to you admit. pick one. It's not prioritizing. You just got to pick one. Exactly. Like I literally one. have to admit to myself, I can't do it all, yeah. which makes me sad. With that said though, I'm definitely going to keep playing them throughout the next few months because I, Hollow Knight's great. Yes, it? It is. It's like, it didn't click for me at first because it just seemed drab and hollow. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Um, But, it, once you get more engaged with it, you start meeting more bug people, mm -hmm. you find the city of rain, and you just come across different things. Like, wow, I'm actually kind of enjoying this experience now. I enjoy exploring it on this world and seeing the crazy stuff that's taking place here. And then you find crazy bosses. Like, wow, this guy's pretty freaking tough. That's what I signed up for. And it's just, it's a good time. Like, whether or not it deserves that crown of, like, best of the best Metroidvanias, I can't make that call yet. Yeah. But... I can see a possible trajectory for it pulling that off yeah. and earning that within for me. Um, but either way, even if I don't find that to be the case, I am enjoying the game. It is a solid title. 
and I'm I'm pretty sure I've barely scratched the surface of it. It's yet. a big game, yeah. I know it's really really big. I'm, I'm really interested in that one, but um, I have to feel like I need to like kind of have that brain space to get into it. I feel yeah. like my brain right now is like I can't handle big things. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm like, I'm like I'm like the the, the lack of sleep is is difficult to like focus on stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, heck, yeah. early in the episode, you were like, "I think I dropped something." Wait, no, I didn't drop something. <laughs> I thought I thought I dropped something. I I thought I thought I have dropped things many times. <laughs> um, all right, so today's episode does not have a single topic. But it has many topics. What it, those topics it has, are? It has gone by many names. Yes. <laughs> um, this is the uh, wait, so, wait, wait, wait. What? Should we should we say that or should we just yeah, do it? I think we should say it. Oh. I think we should, I mean it's on the it's on the podcast oh. title. You download oh. y'all download with the show. <laughs> <laughs> you downloaded this at a pocket. Uh, I go. Good I go. job, everybody. You downloaded this um, mystery episode. Yeah, this is uh, this is our homage, our homage to other video game music podcasts. There are many video game music podcasts. If you're listening to our show, that's fantastic. I'm hoping you, re- I hope you enjoy it. Um, maybe you've discovered us through another show. Maybe there's other shows out there you'd like to know about. We support all other shows. We love all the other shows, and, and we're friends with most all the other podcasters out there. And if we're not friends with you yet and you hear this, come be friends with us. Hit me up. Send me an email, and then let's get together and have pizza. Yes. You bring the pizza. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we're going to start with um, we're gonna start with some podcasts. Maybe you'll know, and some maybe in the future you won't know. And that's how we're going to base our picks off of, right? Yes. Hello, and welcome to the Rhythm in Pixels Music Hour. My name is Robert Nicholsbach. And I'm Pernell Composite. Every week, we're listening to third and fourth generation video game music. This week on the show, we're listening to obscure Japanese titles on the Super Famicom. Oh, I see. Well, I don't think I pull a track from that, but I think I can work within the realm of third and fourth gen console music. My first track? is from the game Power Sokoban for the Super Famicom. This is background music. The artist is unknown. Listening to music from Power Sokoban for the Super Famicom. Artist is unknown. This is background music. And Sokoban is a game of moving boxes. And Power Sokoban is moving boxes powerfully. That sounds very <laughs> engaging to me. Also, what's engaging to me is the instruments that are being used to play this this track. Yeah, let's listen to this one part right here. Na, 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 na. That's a good part. I will say that this comes across as something more reminiscent of what was that game? Legend of the Mystical Ninja. I thought that too. I'm gonna break character. I thought that too. <laughs> That's why I picked this. I think it'd be rude to do it the whole way through. Um <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I was actually looking at um, Goemon first, and then I was like, what else is out there? And then I I found Sokoban, and I was like, I love Sokoban. And Power Sokoban is like an adventure game, almost like a top-down RPG, but like every 
part of like these dungeons and stuff you go in is another Psychobomb puzzle you have to, to get through to get you out it's like the next part of the world it's kind of cool I see <laughs> yeah it sounds very much like that I'm glad to hear that you were able to make that connection and therefore produce this excellent track for the show I did I did I did thank you thank you so you got something for me for now I absolutely do however I have to say that I didn't quite pick what you were expecting in regards to Super Famicom tracks. I actually went in a different direction with this. With the recent release or announcement of the release of the upcoming Tetris movie, I got to getting nostalgic, I guess. Nostalgic? Yes. Nostalgic for that console era and the games and the music that were produced within it. And a game that I feel doesn't get enough love is Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters. It was a release that got so little love that Nintendo itself didn't even have the time to give it a proper credit C. So we're going to take a listen to a track from this game titled Stage 1 Underworld. And again, with the credits thing being an issue, we don't even know who wrote this track, but doesn't mean we can't enjoy it. So let's go. Welcome back. You're listening to Stage 1 Underworld from mm. the game Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters for the Nintendo Game Boy. The composer is unknown, which is unfortunate because this OST is fairly pretty good. I found myself to go back to it over the years with a fond appreciation mm. and one that I wish more people took on for themselves wouldn't you say Rob yes I've never played this game <laughs> and I've hardly ever played the original Kid Icarus the original Kid Icarus was composed by Hirokazu Hip Tanaka um, and I feel like this music follows a very similar progression of that kind of bouncy um, rhythmic chords in the background that nice. we're listening to yeah yeah it's pretty good it's pretty uh, good right here that's this, this part this part's really that, good that part this part, yeah. That's the part? That's the part. <laughs> okay. That is the part. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Do um, you remember how if it plays similar to the NES? It kind of does. However, they made a few changes to this version of the game that makes it stand out compared to the original. For example, they made use of the fact that, the ge- or rather they took it, they were able to compensate for the Game Boy's small screen real estate to allow for rooms in the cavernous areas, the dungeons, to scroll. So you could scroll horizontally or vertically in certain rooms Mm -hmm. before engaging in the ladders to progress. Also, there were levels, normal stages, that allowed for wider exploration as well, most notably being the Sky Palace, where there was horizontal and vertical scrolling, whereas originally you were just going left to right on most of the stages or just going vertically in other stages. Mm. So, in my opinion, <laughs> they made massive improvements on the Kid Icarus formula for this sequel. Yeah, I feel like stage scrolling was something that really wasn't not invented quite just yet for the NES. They were working on that technology, you know? And like I feel like the NES was designed to play Donkey Kong, you know? And so then uh, scrolling stages came, came, came a little bit later with Super Mario. And one interesting tidbit from this game is that Word on the street is that our podcast brother on the east, Purnell, actually managed to handsome, get this handsome game. man. What a devil! Beautiful I, voice. Whoa, whoa, 
don't 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 flatter the guy. <laughs> uh, but he actually acquired this game by trading in Kool Aid points. Oh yeah, to Kool Aid. It's a Kool Aid to get it for free. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Hello out there, all you chill penguins, dudes, and dudettes. You're listening to WVGM, the final wave here on the Rhythm and Pixels podcast. You're listening to your hosts. My name is Lazy Boy. And I'm Shea Lounge. Every week we're listening to the chillest, chillest tunes out there. And in fact, how can you get any more chiller than the Art of Balance for the Wii U, composed by Martin Scioler. This is the title screen. When you're sitting out there just wondering, hey, when am I going to get my balance on? Well, there's an art for that. There's the art form of balance. And hey, maybe you're not the type of person who wants to deal with such zen states. Maybe you just want to relax on the beach with a nice martini, listen to the waves roll in, make sure that you prepare yourself to hit the nightclubs at the evening time, meet some nice fine ladies, have meal conversations with them. You know what I'm saying. How the, You know how we get down over here Aqua City. Ah, Aqua City. The city full of the chillest, chillest tunes, the most chillest tunes of an hour and a half of chillest tunes every week. Yes, WVGM is three times the length, hence three times better than KVGM. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Why did you do that? I mean, I mean, yes, yes, that is a fact indeed. Hey, Shay Lounge, what you got for us next? Well, let me see here for you. So, I got the perfect track for putting my feet up and just, I don't know, letting the sunset take its course. This comes from the game Earthbound on the Super Nintendo Entertainment Center. This is the track for the area titled Summers, the track being referred to as the Eternal Taurus Trap. It goes by composers Hirokazu Tanaka and Kichi Suzuki. And I have to say, when you're done listening to this track, trust me when I say you're going to be in the mood for something.
Welcome back. You're listening to Eternal Tourist Dread. That is the theme for the summer's area of the game Earthbound, composed by Hirokazu Tanaka and Keiichi Suzuki for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, you can't tell me you're not listening to this track and thinking, baby, it's Friday, work is shut down, I'm t- it's time to leave. I'm going to go home, going to get myself a nice change of clothes, drive down to the nice beach areas there, wherever the beaches are in your area. If you don't have a beach, it doesn't matter. Go to a shoal or a, a fjord, or whatever you do, whatever you have <laughs> available to you that has some dirt next to some water. <laughs> put your feet up, put your chair out. Drink yourself a nice beverage. If there's a concession stand nearby or a creepy guy selling hot dogs, it don't matter. It's all about relaxation time. And this track is going to get you to Sunset City and then some. Mm. I don't think of Herakazu Tanaka as my one-way ticket to Sunshine City, but right now I think so. This is a lazy, a lazy stroll. A lazy stroll to that Sunshine State. Got your special someone on the arm. Yeah, that Sunshine Country is just a beautiful place to be. In that sunshine neighborhood. <laughs> God damn it! That was How many can I do before you cracked up? <laughs> I got four. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Hello and welcome to VG Emporium. This is the VG Emporium East wing of the VG Emporium franchise. Yes, we have franchise. We are your new middle management. You can see on my name tag, my name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Nice Vice! And every week, you can come in, peruse the shelves any day of the week, any day between Monday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We have the greatest video game music you've ever heard on the shelves. And we are all about positivity here. We want to get crazy with our prices crazy with our tracks and good with the music too we have got some deep deep discounts this discount um is on armored core for the playstation it's only uh what is it a dollar 99 we gotta be crazy we're practically giving it away we pretty much are you name the price you can have it in fact the uh the artist keiji sagawa has come to my house and said stop playing your music on your show otherwise we will send a cease and desist to rhythm and pixels but we're not going to listen to them today, are we? Because we are crazy for discounts. <laughs> and prices. And I got to say, guys, if you find yourself coming to the store, you want to prove the wares, a new thing we're trying to franchise with our new franchise, we want to make it so that you feel as though you can get variations on your OST. You want Super Mario World 1-1, but you want it in the form of a whistle sensation. I got you. <laughs> We can take care of you, baby. Blaster Master Area 1. We can add two with a... <laughs> Anything you need. Any kind of sound. Guttural sounds. Left whipping sounds. <laughs> Tap it on a desk sound. We got you covered, baby, here at the VG Emporium East because we want you to be happy. Happy, 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 happy customers. We want you to go out smiling and... Great! Why don't you tell our customers what our next deep, deep discount is for? All right. We're talking about this new game that nobody talks about because they've never heard of it because that's what they call it. It's Ooh. new, and by new I mean old. It's Conquest of the Crystal Palace on the Nintendo Entertainment System. The track title is called Cam Shop, and it's composed by Mitsu Yasu Tomohisa. Check it out, baby. You're going to love it.
Welcome back. You're listening to Kim Shop from the game Conquest of the Crystal Palace for the Nintendo Entertainment System, composed by Mitsuyashu Tomohisa. I have no doubt in my mind we're not going to be able to keep this track on the shelves. This is a spectacular tune that's just waiting to be moved. It is flying, flying off the shelves, and you cannot find this at Kim Shop. You find this at Rob and Parnell's shop at the VG Emporium East on East 42nd Market Street, Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> One nine twenty five six. Yeah, that's right. You pick you pick up a copy of this game. What's it called? Conquest of the Crystal Somethings. You pick you pick it up for your mom. You pick up a copy for your dad. Pick up a copy for everybody. That is correct. I and got it, nothing left. <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> but I gotta say, man, I gotta say, if you like this track and you want more spectacular tunes from various video games related to energetic shops, energetic dungeons. Energetic mazes. <laughs> energetic slumber time. It doesn't matter. You want to go to nap time? You want to feel good about yourself? You want to feel ecstatic about the time that lies ahead for you? You want it done in any auto style? You want? Oh, God, crap. I, I'm in the same boat you are. Yeah, yeah, you can't keep up that energy for so I long, I right? cannot. It is difficult. We're not those people for now. This is a break, me breaking character to say that. Rage Cage, I love you, buddy. Yeah, and yeah. I, and I, love, I love your stylings. And that was like... <laughs> that. Man, you are a champ. I love you, man. Uh, You're that, good. This is a good track. It, it, it remi- it, it, honestly, it reminds me of something. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, what is that? Well, no, it sounds like something else, huh? I, this, I know I'm going back to Legacy Music Hour, but huh. what is that? I don't know. I just, I just hear it as being resemblant of a jingle for a store. Yeah. Like, it sounds like they took what they hear in a multitude of various store jingles or, like, product jingles and just slapped it down into, like, a very narrow window of, like, here's a repetitive loop that says, like, bro, here's one of the this is food. You can pick it up for a dollar or more, so <laughs> come, you feel like you want. I'm tired. I got a Shazam. It's <laughs> but it just sounds like a jingle. It sounds like a jingle. It is a good jingle. It's a good jingle until it's been looped like eight million times. You need times. to be the family of four, but you ain't got much money in store for it. Yes, come down to Kim's shop and buy some hamburger meat. That is pre-processed. You'll be happy that you came to see me. I will feed you well or die trying. Come <laughs> visit me. I hope that was a little better than the last one I tried to do. <laughs> I'll come feed you or I'll be dead. <laughs> or die trying. <laughs> or die trying. <laughs> oh my god. Welcome to the bonus round part of our show. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Persecutus. And every week we listen to great music, that video game music that has been rearranged, reorchestrated, remixed, re for you. Re for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it's the perfect fit for our little show here. And now we have the perfect tracks for you to listen to today. We're going to listen to some great jazz covers of some video game music. Am I partner in crime here? I forget your name already. Persecutus. You just hired me. We've been doing this show for 20 years. I'll get your name eventually, Pernell. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to listen to music from the J Music Ensemble. I, I love these guys, by the way. This is music from Marvel vs. Capcom 2, The Factory Stage, by Tetsuya Shibata, and arranged and performed by the J Music Ensemble. Patrick Bartley on saxophone, Max Bolico on trumpet, Sean Ritchie on guitar, Matt Wong on the keyboard, Juna Sarita on bass, and Norman Edwards on drums. I hope you enjoy.
That was the J Music Ensemble doing their arranged version of Factory Stage from Marvel vs. Capcom 2, composed by Tetsuya Shibata. I love the J Music Ensemble. I love the I love everything about them. I love their approach to video game music. I love their approach to arrangements on the um on on the on the original like on the, the arrangements of the original music. I love the instrumentation. I think their drummer is one of the best drummers I've heard like in a very very long time along with a bassist. I mean the horn section is I mean the horn section is a standout. That saxophone is fantastic. But that bassist and that drummer, they they gives me life, Pernell. <laughs> is how that works for me. I have to say that that particular track stood out to me in a way that resonated more so than previous bonus rounds in the last, say, month or two. I don't know what it is. Maybe it was just the vibrant energy that emanated from it or even just the number of transitions that it had. But I felt very much as though I would like to listen to more of what these guys have to offer. Absolutely. And I'm I'm happy that you brought that to the show today. And we'll have more of that more of that music you can find online and where you can find it through our website. But I believe we have another track from you. Indeed we do. You see, I've come across this composer or this cover artist from uh, another friend of ours who does a show that goes by the name of Martyrus. And this person goes by the name of Alina Gingertail. I've been listening to more of her music over the past few weeks as a result of you know, discovering her music on, you know, ReVGM. So this is a track from the Mortal Kombat theme, covered, referred to as the Bozuki cover. And this was done by the aforementioned Alina Gingertail. Welcome back. You were listening to the Mortal Kombat theme, referred to as the Bozuki cover, done from, I assume, the Mortal Kombat franchise theme, uh, but this was covered by Alina Gingertail. Now, what I like about Alina Gingertail, though I don't particularly resonate with every track that she produces, I do find that the ones that do click with me really click with me. And that may be related to the instruments that she chooses to portray mm. in her compositions. Mm. What do you think, Rob? I think so. I think, I think um, not just unusual instrumentation or instrumentation not normally heard in video game arrangements um, could offer a fresh perspective on the original composition. And that, my friends, is what I'm all about.
right, thanks for joining us on episode 35-10 of Rhythm and Pixels. This is actually the Rhythm and Pixels podcast. <laughs> um, this is our homage to some of our favorite podcasts out there. I mean, we have many favorites. If we didn't do your podcast, we'll do it next time because this is fun. We'll do it again. <laughs> I got to say, the thing I found funniest is the fact that we couldn't even keep a straight face throughout our own improv sessions. It was just like, well. Yeah, we're just messing around. We're, we're, we're just playing around with, with you guys. It's all in good fun. We love we love each and every one of you. We really do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And to suffice, to, suffice to say, the thing that I think is the most enjoyable or hopefully came across the best here is the fact that there's only one of each of us, right? Mm-hmm. You can't... We all have our own shows in the way we do what we do. And it's because we all do things in our own unique ways that makes that all these shows can coexist, even though we all talk about video game music. We are our own microcosms Mm. of entertainment, and our cadence is what brings people to our shows and listens to them. The music that we choose, obviously, is is deliciously well-served and made available. But if you just came out and just said... All right, Jim, in a track, whatever. <laughs> like, that's not what's going to keep people coming because you can just go to YouTube and listen to music. Right. right. If you wanted a playlist, you could just download a playlist, right? That is totally fine, up to you. But if you want, like, a perspective on the music, if you want a fresh voice about the music, then you can tune into a podcast. That's why, you turn, that's, why, that's why you tune into a podcast anyway, right? Yes. Yeah. And I personally feel that all of us brings a little something special to the show that makes our shows unique and worth listening to so thank you guys for being a part of this community for making your shows producing them whether it's weekly monthly bi-weekly yearly right thank you for just doing it and making this that we can have this community of podcasters and podcast listeners because quite frankly and rob can vouch for this and i think he may also agree with it you guys help make Time go by in a way that doesn't suck. Just to point in the general <laughs> for simple, simple words. When time is when we're when we're passing through time, and we're aging very slowly, you make it so that we don't hate it. <laughs> yes, hate that time. I want to give just like a couple honorable mentions of some of the shows we were going to do or we that were on on the list. And we want to thank uh, Alex Messenger's AVGM Journey. Give a shout outs to the Super Mercado Brothers, the Pixelated Audio. Uh, shout out to Ed Wilson over at the VG Embassy, Mike and Justin at XVGM Radio. We probably should have done that one. That would have been a fun to do because they do like a radio show style thing. Um, game that tune, although they are definitely not safe for work. Uh, that might be a podcast, a Patreon exclusive <laughs> episode if we do that. Uh, the Shujin VGM Club, uh, Volts's Supremes synth vgm dream stream machine i love that name i'm not sure if they're if they took a hiatus or if they're back or or, or what so those are just a few just and a our few. long our long gone but not forgotten brother what did you forget the name no forever sound version the forever sound version. i just wanted to take that nice <laughs> quiet pause like the in memoriam of sorts which what that means is if you're willing to resurrect and come back we would love to have you back michael Bridget. yeah actually if you just want to come back on the show um I, I appreciate the message that you sent me mike um over uh or messenger um it's nice to hear from from people um just every once in a while just through through the through through texts or chats or whatever yeah um it's nice to to, to check in and see how y'all are doing that's so, oh. In the VGM jukebox. VGM jukebox. So, yeah, two and um, uh, 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 very, very good music, VGM. Yes. The, 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 VGM, very good music. He finished, right? Yeah. Hit he has, he had, finish line. He had a good way to go out on, too. He actually yeah. ended the show with like like credit themes or ending themes. Wow. Yeah, that's great, actually. I like that. We were talking about the, the Legacy Music Hour at the beginning, and you're like, oh, wow, they've used um, Area 1 from Blaster Master forever right their first episode was all title music and they were picking they were they were playing title music to pick what was going to be their show opener well that's pretty slick yeah, and that was like 14 years ago <laughs> yeah like i came across the uh ago. i was looking while preparing for this episode i came across their opt classic uh vgm dance party yeah video and that was it's apparently so done like 12 years ago or something crazy it's, like yeah that. so what they did was they they hired a bunch of dancers they, they put a call out in like LA or something for people to come out to do like a dance television show, but no one, so everyone signed up to do it, but no one knew what the music was going to play. And so everyone was like, was, was really, really, really hyping it up thinking that they were going to be on a TV show. 
not realizing what they were going to dance to was video game music. <laughs> and, I, and I can't get over the fact, I love the that. part where they were playing, it was near the beginning, but it just sticks out where they were playing Area 3 from Blaster Master. And a guy gets on the floor and he just does like a break dance spin kick. <laughs> and everybody's like, I'm just watching people dance. I'm trying to catch a rhythm. Like, okay, is that guy on the beat to this particular track? Or is he just like flailing? Like, I'm just yeah. moving. But it was, I I adore that clip yeah. so much. And I go back to it here and there. Brent, Brent Weinbach's form of comedy, like his, his sense of humor is very unique. It can be a little um, like potty humor sometimes. Like, like sign me up. I collect garbage pail kids. It's, I know, right? Like, so like every once in a while, I'm like, ah, I don't know. But like his his stuff on YouTube is really funny. A lot of his old stuff. He did a whole a whole like little like little like um, I guess short film called I Don't Dance. <laughs> he can't. It's not that he can't dance. He just doesn't. It. He won't dance. And there's a very very good reason. And you have to watch the video to understand why. <laughs> Um, and also, um, there's one called Smooth Jazz, which I, I, I like to watch. There's a jazz piano, smooth smooth jazz piano or something like that. I watch it every once in a while. If I ever, ever really need a really good laugh, mm-hmm. I watch that because I feel like that's the silliness that I need in my life. Also, for Rage Cage, I got to say, you need to get you need to get Nice Vice on your show at some point. You need, <laughs> to, get a, you need to get your own Nice it Vice. It took me forever to realize that Nice Vice was... The anti-hero, the anti-rage cage. <laughs> a, a rage, nice, cage, vice. It's just uh, That's pretty good. Um, if you like what you're listening to, if you want to get in contact with us, if you're angry with us about what we just did, you can send us an email. Rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. We, we, get, um, we, we read every email that comes to us. Uh, we may not respond to every email, but we read everything that, that comes to us in that area there. Um, if you want a full track listing of this episode and, and of all of our episodes and access to all of our episodes, go to the website. Rhythmandpixels.com. At the, uh, the top of the website, there's a link to our Discord server where you can hang out and chat with us and other listeners of the show and other VGM enthusiasts and other VGM podcasters are there as well. It's at the top of the website. Um, we also have a 24-7, 8-bit and 16-bit YouTube station, uh, radio station, playing nothing but you know classic video game music and deep cuts. It's uh, youtube.com slash rhythmandpixels. And if you like the show and you want to support it, you can go to patreon.com slash rhythmandpixels. Uh, as a member there, at any level, you get access to episodes ad-free. You get access to um, a monthly live stream episode, which we'll be doing in the probably the next two weeks. We'll, we'll announce that on all of our social media and Discord stuff. Um, and at the higher levels, you get cool stuff like stickers and mugs and exclusive t-shirts. We also like to thank all of our Patreon members at the top of the show. Um, at the beginning of, uh, at the end of every episode, <laughs> not at the top of the show, at the end of every episode. Thank you to Brooke. Thank you to Corey. Thank you to Khalid, Kristen, GameFan44, Martyrist, host of Read VG on Podcast, Mike Myers, Fashion8060, Super Game Station. Find them at www.supergamestation.com. Thank you to Antmaster, Brian Pitt, Cameron Worma, Carlos, Kung Fu Carlito, host of the Heroes 3 Podcast. Thank you to Chris Wisner, a.k.a. Musashi219. The wise guy. Christopher Sendstrom, Chuck Kowalski, Davey Cakes, David Good, David Taylor, Enchilada Rigol, Harold Howard, Triple Jeff, Justin Schneider, host of XVGM Radio, Keith Shusterman, Michael Bridgewater, Rage Cage, host of the VG Emporium Podcast, Reinhard Zilkova, Romantic Sagat, Sleepy S'more, Steve Miller, Taco, Zach Thornbach, all of you and many, many more. Thank you very much for your continued support of my show. That was... That By the, far the fastest you've ever read that. That was the third time tonight I've read the. Like, <laughs> so I finally hit the record button while doing it. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Our next episode will be a live show. So if you are a Patreon member, you will get um, notification of when that will be. It will be in a week or two. What was the topic? The topic will be the 4 in February, Pernell. Oh, there we go. <laughs> So um, if you have a track suggestion from a game that you've been playing this February, please send it to us at rhythmandpixels at hotmail.com. We'd appreciate it. Please do, because quite frankly, this has been one of the weirdest four in February in a long time. I'm looking forward to hearing how other people fared throughout this fun journey. Yes. It's, it's been a journey for me. I hope it's been a journey for you. I hope you enjoy the journey. Um, all these other podcasts. And I hope while you you're enjoy at it, enjoy, well. And while you're at it, enjoy the host of a VGM journey. Yes. <laughs> well, I enjoy Alex. Oh, I enjoy Alex. Thank you all so much for listening to our show. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernell. Have a great week. See you next time. And remember, I kind of already said it earlier, but um, I probably said like 15 things earlier, but I'm just going to go with the idea that um, community is a very important and, I don't know, mentally helpful aspect to socializing. 
It helps us, I don't know, for better appreciate the things that we like and enjoy. It helps us better cope with problems and uncertainties in our day-to-day lives and society. And quite frankly, it's just nice to have people around you that are positive and pleasant and able to help you through thick and thin or just be there, even if they're not personally helping you with your whatever problems. So for all those of you that are in this community with us, Thank you, and please continue to be positive impacts on said community because I'm going to tell you something. It's mucky out there. We could all use more of the positive and less of the muck.